Welcome back to Chemistry 1510 video notes for Chapter 6. In this video, we're going to talk about Hess's Law. Hess's Law is a process that we can use to add up heats uh, associated with chemical reactions to figure out the enthalpy change for a reaction that we haven't yet carried out in lab. This can be helpful when you are carrying out a reaction that you might be worried uh, it could be explosive, and so you'd rather find out on paper first if, uh, if you should take the necessary safety precautions. So let's talk about how to employ Hess's Law. It's like a fun puzzle. So first let's talk about the actions that you can do, and then I'll show you a sample problem. So in our sample problem, we're going to have a series of reactions, and you can perform three different actions with these reactions. So first is if I give you this reaction, the uh, creation of ammonia, if we reverse this equation, so if we turn it around and say 2 moles of ammonia decompose to form 1 mole of nitrogen gas and 3 moles of hydrogen gas, then that de decomposition process is going to require us putting in 92.38 kilojoules per mole of heat. So notice how the sign flipped. Here it was negative, here it's positive. We can also take a chemical reaction and we can multiply it by a coefficient. So we could take this chemical reaction and we could multiply the whole thing by 2. If we multiplied the whole thing by 2, then it would read 2 moles of nitrogen gas plus 6 moles of hydrogen gas make 4 moles, oops, I almost wrote moles, of ammonia gas. And we would then take the delta H and we'd multiply that by 2 as well. So like in algebra world, whatever we do to one part, we have to do to the rest. So if we're multiplying the coefficients by 2, we have to multiply delta H by 2. Then, in addition to multiplying by 2, we can actually multiply by fractions, which is pretty unusual because it kind of goes against your whole, you know, balanced chemical equation must be the smallest whole number ratio. And we can talk about in class a little bit about why we can do this, why it's allowed here and not allowed when we were doing chapter 3. I'll give you a little bit of time to think about it before I tell you. All right, so this is something you can do. So then the final thing that we're capable of doing is adding equations together. So when we add equations together, what we're looking for are things that are the same on opposite sides of our reaction arrow, right? So here's our reaction arrow, here's our reaction arrow. On the reactant side, we have a CO gas. On the product side, we have a CO gas. So those are going to cancel out. Whereas on the same side of the reaction arrow, these are the same and those are going to add together. And states matter, right? If this was gas and this was liquid, then they, they couldn't add. They both have to be gases. Just like how if this was a gas and this was a liquid, they wouldn't cancel. So the states have to be the same. So when we take these two equations and add them together, we can now write the result. And as we write the result of the chemical reaction, we can also write the result of the delta H. So for the delta H, we're going to take the negative 110.5 kilojoules per mole and add that, oops, makes this look prettier, to the negative 283.0 kilojoules per mole. So overall, our delta H is a negative 393.15, I'm sorry, 0.5 kilojoules per mole. So these are the three actions that you're capable of doing. Let's look at a problem that's going to help us figure out when we're going to employ these actions. So 
When we have a Hess's Law problem, the way that you're going to know it's a Hess's Law problem is you're going to be given a chemical reaction like this one. And then off to the side, it's going to have a delta H and say, I don't know what that delta H is. And what you're going to do is take the information that's given and manipulate it so that when you add those equations together, what you end up with is this your goal equation. And then when you add the delta H's together, your delta H will be the delta H for that reaction. So let's think through this one together. Up here is our goal. It's highlighted in yellow. And what I notice is that in our goal, we have an iron three oxide compound. In this equation, the first one and the second one, iron 3 oxide is only present once, right here. And watch out for this little typo. That 2 is not supposed to be in parentheses. All right, so just mentally remove those parentheses. So we know we're going to use this top equation, and we want to match the placement of iron 3 oxide in our goal equation. So on this equation right here, it's in the reactant side. We want it to be on the product side. So that means that we need to flip this equation. So when we flip it, I'm gonna rewrite it down here to help me keep track of things. And when we flip it, the delta H is going to flip too. It's going to flip signs. So now it's going to be a positive 26.7 kilojoules per mole. So let's also look at that bottom equation. When we look at the bottom equation, what I see is that I have some oxygen present and I have oxygen in my goal. And so that helps me recognize that my bottom equation is probably already situated on the proper side. I also take a notice to make sure that there's no plain old oxygen in the equation that I just flipped so that I don't have to consider anything else. One of the other things you could do is look at the things that need to go away. So if I compare the equation I just flipped to my goal, I have carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide in this equation and I don't want those. And if you look at the equation that I haven't yet manipulated, I have carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide in there. The difference is the equation that is, I've already manipulated this one, has three carbon dioxides and three carbon monoxides. So that means that I have to take this one and multiply it by three. That also works if you consider the fact that you were given a half of an oxygen and over here you have three halves of an oxygen. So everything kind of fits together. So I'm going to take that equation, I'm going to multiply it by three. So I have three CO gases plus three halves O2 gas makes three CO2 gases. And my delta H, I also multiply by 3. So then, I look for my CO2 and my CO2, and they cancel. My CO and my CO, and they cancel. And when I add these equations together, I'm going to end up with 2 irons plus 3 halves O2 make Fe2O3 solid, and then I'll add the delta H's together. In your delta H, you should end up with negative 822.3 kilojoules per mole. So before we sign out, I want to say one last thing. It's really hard to grade these problems on exams, and so the directions in the exam will say that you absolutely must write what I've just boxed over here, the actions that you performed in order to get credit for it. So you must write the actions in the margin. So that's all for Hess's Law. You have one more problem down below if you want to give that one a try. 
And if you do, you'll know you're on the right track if you get negative 44.0 kilojoules per mole. So I'll leave that one for you to practice and we'll practice some more in class. This is Katoni, signing out.